started if I can get my dog to stop. Hang on just a sec. We're, we're going to try something new. We're going to have him sit here with me and see if that maybe helps things. He might, hey, hey, look, you're going to be nice. Sorry, everybody. So welcome. I see 10 of you have joined us. Plus, we have Casey and we have Jivia. And Casey, I see that we're recording, so that's fantastic. Um, I'll try to keep my eyes open, Casey. And as soon as I have that recording from you this weekend, I'll send it back out to everybody so that those who were not able to attend will be able to watch in case they need any travel details or anything like that. Um, so we're going to hope that my little dog will stay quiet. He's normally a really sweet dog. He just wants to bark at the neighbor. So, um, so I thought what I'd do is, is first share the travel guide that Casey sent out to all of you. Um, give me just one second to get that pulled up and I just want to walk through the schedule briefly and then I'll just answer any questions you have about the schedule, about travel, about your, um, uh, where is it? About the schedule, travel, there it is, um, your presentations, etc. All right. Somebody give me a nod if you can see that document now. Awesome. Thanks. Um, all right, so uh, Sunday, everybody's arriving. Uh, we wanted to try to get everybody checked in by about 3 p.m. just so everybody has time to um, get settled a little bit before the event. And um, we will start, though, at 6 p.m. in the uh, meeting rooms there at the hotel in caucus rooms one and two. And um, it's just a, a casual networking reception. Um, you can wear what you wore in, on the flight that day. Um, there are not going to be any additional industry folks there. It's just you guys and your faculty mentors and our team. Um, it's a chance for us to all kind of catch back up with each other. We don't have any structured, um, we're not doing anything with you during that event. It's low key and casual and non-stress. Okay, that's the whole point. When that's over, we don't have anything on the schedule that night. So if you need time with your working groups, that's a great time to grab it. Um, it's a great time to get together, go over your presentation, practice, finalize details, etc. Or go out and, and enjoy yourselves if you're already done with all the hard work. Um, on Monday, we, um, we leave at 8 a.m. from the hotel. So you'll want to have breakfast before that point. Um, you basically just go right downstairs and it's at the hotel and um, it's already paid for. So have breakfast there and then board the charter bus. Um, I believe we actually need to leave at 8 a.m., so please be there before that. Um, don't kind of slink in at 8.05, because that would hold things up, I think. Um, I know Shannon can't be on this call today, but my gut says that we actually need to leave at 8. Um, when we go to Novozymes, we're going to take a tour. Now, I know Shannon has sent some messages out this week about the appropriate clothing for that tour. Can anyone tell me what you've heard from Shannon? Because I want to make sure that it's getting across to y'all. Wear closed toe shoes and pants. Closed toe yeah. shoes, wear pants. Pants, yeah. Anything else? Okay. I think that was it as well. Closed toe shoes and pants. Um, they were concerned someone might wear a dress or sandals. Um, and they said, whatever you do wear, you need to be comfortable in because I think you're going to be doing a great deal of walking. Um, and then once you finish that tour, you'll come back and have lunch. And then um, I'm going to do a session on cross-cultural communication strategies. And we, just so you guys know, um, we waited until kind of midway through the year to decide what to do at this conference. It was not something we had kind of pre-prescribed. Um, and Denny and I, through conversations about what we were seeing as the greatest area of need, um, not, not just from the standpoint of, of what don't you already know, but also from the standpoint of what we're seeing in the industry and, and the need for you to know there. Um, we thought cross-cultural communication strategies would be an important topic for us to touch on. So we'll spend an hour talking about that. And then Max and I are going to lead you through a biorefinery bio design challenge. There is nothing you need to do in advance of that challenge, really. Um, we're not, you don't have to come having read anything. We're going to give you the information you need and then present a challenge to you that you'll work in teams um, to, to work on or to come up with a solution for. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I just wanted to add, when we go to Novozymes, uh, it's pro I think it's not a high security facility, but just in case, everyone should really have an ID with them, just as a rule of thumb. Always have okay. your government issued ID, which you're bringing with you anyway, to be able to get on the plane. Uh, not a bad idea to just always have it with you. Good point. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with Novozymes. I don't know their security procedures, but a lot of facilities, not just government and courts and airports, may require that you show a government ID. So, yeah. great, suggestion. great suggestion. Great um, suggestion. You'll do so that biorefinery design challenge. You guys will work in groups on that, and Max and I will kind of float from group to group answering questions or pushing you a little bit. And then you will, um, in teams, uh, present your solutions to that design challenge. This is similar in structure to the leadership challenge that we did. Um, it's different, very different in content, but similar in structure. You'll be given a challenge, you'll work in a team, and you'll present your solution um, to all of us. And faculty will likely be in the room when you present that, um, and maybe a few folks from NCSU. But um, I don't believe that there are that we're planning to have industry in the room at that point. Um, and then we'll board the bus to head back to the Hilton uh, or the Double Tree by Hilton. And dinner is on your own that night, and we did that on purpose so that working groups can be together. Um, some groups last year were in great shape and they were able to have a leisurely dinner and then do a quick practice and they were fine. Some groups were still putting together their presentations and they chose to just order pizza and stay at the hotel and buckle down and really get the work done. It's all depending on what your group um, needs. Uh, just like we did in San Francisco, when dinner is on your own, you can expense that. Um, it's part of your per diem that's been allowed on this trip. So um, you'll receive information in your, I believe, case data, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when they get there, they'll receive um, kind of a little packet to help them prepare their expense report, just like they have in the past, right? I think the, the, this guide has, on the last page, there's um, something about reimbursements. Perfect. And if, if Casey follows what he's done in the past, they'll have like, or if Shannon's office, they'll have like a little envelope to put all the receipts in and, and keep track of things. Yep. Everybody will get an envelope with their uh, sort of welcome binders. Awesome. Thanks, Casey. Mm -hmm. And then the um, rest of that evening is just dedicated to working group and practice. So I'm going to pause. Uh, we do have a room available in the hotel for you guys to practice if you want. Um, I'm going to pause here for a moment and see what questions you have so far about Sunday and Monday uh, and the agenda for those days. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to move on. You, you'll have more time to ask questions um, in a moment, so don't think you've lost your chance. Um, Tuesday, again, you'll have breakfast on your own um, at the Double Tree before 8 a.m., and that's when you want to travel to the meeting location. And this is where there's an error on this guide. It says that it's a 20-minute walk. We have found since then that it's actually a 40-minute walk. Um, it's, a, I think, two miles away. So you do not have to walk if you don't want. Um, Brad and the Ohio State team, they're putting together kind of a, um, a, a ride-sharing list. Um, so that we'll have a couple of vehicles and they're checking to see which faculty or students might have vehicles They're going to have a list of that so that we can figure out how we can share rides for those who don't want to walk um, There and if if we aren't able to to get kind of a ride-sharing thing going then we will always have uber or bus as an option as well um, Let's see so we're headed to the. Just, I'm, I, this is a good moment to interrupt. I did check the weather. It's supposed to be in the mid to upper 70s in North Carolina, for those who care. Uh, but also, as regards the 40-minute walk, it's apparently not a leisurely walk. It's not a level park-like walk. So um, we heard that from our uh, from our faculty mentor from North Carolina State. So just be aware that uh, that it's it's uh, for those who would like that by all means but just just be forewarned that, that that that's the that's the i don't know if you want to call it challenge but that's the situation mm -hmm. good point and we also know that you will be 
business dress that day for your working group presentations. So that's why we didn't want to you know, force anyone to walk that day. That, that's a day given that you'll be dressed up that you might want to find a more, <laughs> more leisurely way to get there. Um, so then we'll do working groups, pre group presentations. That's what we're doing very first thing when we get to the um, NCSU library. Um, each group will have 45 minutes total. Our suggestion is that you use that um, about 30 minutes of that for your presentation and 15 for questions and answers. Um, if you would like, we can, um, I mean, I'd be happy to kind of serve as a, a flagger in the audience to let you know where, how you're doing on time. Um, depending on what your group wants, I'd be happy to give you kind of a 20 minute um, note so that you know you've got 10 minutes left and then um, kind of a five minute warning when we're down to five minutes left and then tell you when we're done. Um, if you want more than that, I can do more than that. Um, but just communicate with me about what you'd like um, so that I can be as helpful to you as possible. Um, Melinda, I'm sorry to interrupt again. I just wanted to confirm, it is 45 minutes because I think my, my group was under the impression that it's 30 minutes and 15 minutes for Q&A. So I just want to correct. Confirm. Is it it's, 45 minutes for the presentation itself? No, Plus, it's 45 minutes, including the Q&A. So that's okay. 30 no, minutes of the presentation. Yeah. That's what you've got. Okay. The and then um, the order, I believe Shannon sent this out, but you guys will be in order of the working group numbers. So the bio preferred group will go first. Um, green transportation will go second. Global will go third. Um, Beyond the billion ton will go fourth, and no more cheap oil will go fifth. And it just hit me. I haven't done the math on this, but I'm going to double check. Hang on just one second. Five times 45. Plus 15. by 60. Yeah, that's that would be four hours. But yeah, we should be fine. Okay. All right. So that during that time period, um, a couple of you have been asking who would be in the room. Um, your fellow students will be in the room while you present. Your faculty mentors will be in the room. The cable team will be in the room. I'm getting a lot of background noise from someone. If there's someone who needs to mute their mic, you might do that. I can't tell where it's coming from. Really, it might be coming from you. Thank you. Uh, it's coming from Haley. Haley. Thank you. I appreciate it, Haley. Okay. Uh, the um, so also in the room, we've invited the industry panel that's going to be there at one fifteen. We've invited them to come and watch those presentations if they're able, and we've also invited um, Shannon invited a couple of other uh, people from different. Um, bioeconomy companies uh, or industry associations and some folks from NC State. So um, you will be speaking to a broader audience hopefully than just our group. We want more people in the room to hear what you're doing because they then they understand I think the um, importance of this program and the level high quality level of work that you guys are doing. Um, I think it helps to lend credence to the entire cable program and help um, give weight to the distinction of having been a cable delegate, student delegate. So that it's a good thing that people will be there for that. Um, after all of the working group presentations are completed, um, you'll have lunch and some networking during lunch, and then an industry panel, similar to what we did in um, San Francisco at ABLC Next. I will tell you though, this time we have asked the faculty to kind of be careful not to, to um, take too large of a role in the conversation. They were very active in the conversation in San Francisco and we wanted to make sure that students got a chance to ask questions. So know that we are hoping and expecting that you guys as students have lots of great questions for these folks. It would be a great idea for you to Google them before you come to the event or read their bio um, and come ready to find out the things you need to know about this industry so that you can be a great leader in it. Um, we, they will share a little bit before there's a question and answer period, but just know that we're really hoping students um, are, are taking lead in that conversation. 
Um, when that's over, we'll do um, kind of a leadership training conversation. We've talked about um, all of the levels of leadership or all of the, the categories of leadership from the beginning of the year. We started with um, personal growth, um, uh, growth-minded leadership, and we've talked about character leadership and striving leadership. So for this session, we're going to talk about leading others, uh, highest level of leadership. Um, and then after that, um, Jeremy Schoen, who is from um, Shannon's office, Shannon and Denny's office there at OBIC, is going to come talk to you about travel reimbursement and answer any questions you have. He's got some tips and tricks that will help make it an easier process for you. And um, then we want to talk to you about an opportunity to stay involved with us next year. It's an ambassador program or an ambassador opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, we'll travel back to the Hilton and then have um, a group dinner that night to celebrate at Sullivan Steakhouse. Um, and that will not be a stressful evening for you in any way, shape, or form. It's just a night to celebrate your um, successful completion of this program. Um, let's see. Other than that, the next day, we've got focus group meetings again, starting no, at 8. Uh, you have the, you, that part of the agenda is not showing. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it showing now? No, the left Belinda, I actually have a quick question. Okay. There, okay, there you're coming up on it. Good. What's your question? I was just wondering if we there's somewhere we could find a list of the people that may be attending. So if you wanted to do some research, we can. Let me hang on just one second. Josh just asked this question the other day, and Shannon answered him. So let me find the response that Shannon sent to him. Give me just one second. Nope, that's not it. Hmm. Let's see, where would it be? Melinda, if you'd like, I can send this to you and then you can just send it out to all the students after the meeting today. Which thing, Casey? The email about who's going to be there? Well, I've got a PDF of um, all the industry people with their bios. That would be helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah. That would be great, but I, I need the full list. Shannon had also invited some other people, and I want to make sure that I share those names with them as well. Okay. So if Casey will send me the bios of the four industry folks that are listed in this, um, in this schedule, I'll send that back out to all of you. And then, oh, Linda, want me to just send that to you? I think I just found it. Thanks, Josh. All right, so here's what it says. Um, Melissa Narens with the KCE Group. Um, she's a consultant for the United Soybean Board. She's going to be there. Um, and Dr. Richard Vendit, um, NCUS. And then Shana McAlexander. You guys met her. She was at Bio, and she's representing NCSU. And then three or four more NCSU faculty and students that we don't know names on. So when Casey sends me the bio, um, when I send out the recording to you, I'll include all of the bios that Casey's sending me, as well as the additional names that I have, so that if you want to do any research, you can. Well, Linda, um, Shana actually sent me a whole list of some speakers and conference guests. Um, if you want me to share that with you. Awesome. Please do. That'd be great. Good questions. Um, so yeah, as soon as I have that information, I end the recording, I'll send all of that out to you. <clears throat> okay, so then the last day, um, you'll have focus group meetings, and Carrie will let you know which group you're in. I believe you've been assigned based on your travel. Um, so uh, I'm sure she'll let you know before that point, and if it doesn't work with your schedule, just let her know. She's pretty flexible um, as needed. And then um, we have some optional tours you can participate in after that from 10 to noon, um, and then people leave. Um, there is no meeting, like no gathering of everyone that day. We've kept it. Uh, we know that a lot of people need to go early or for different reasons, and so we we tried to just end all of the official things with our dinner on Tuesday night. And that way, Wednesday can be um, focused on collecting additional information from you and doing some tours, but nothing formal or official. So that's the entire schedule. What questions do you have? 
I don't have a question, but more of a, as a comment, um, as the NC State delegate, um, I also have a car so I can help to bring students from the, from double tree to hunt. Um, but we do have the wolf line bus system that you could probably take a 10, 15 minute walk to the, to the nearest, um, bus stop and then take that to, directly to hunt. Okay. Caitlin, I'm going to send a message to Brad Collins because he's the one organizing the ride sharing. Okay. I'm going to let him know that you have a car and have offered to help. Yeah. Um, can I send him your phone number? Yeah, of course. Do you, do you mind sharing it with me right now just so sure. I can get it going to him? 203. Uh-huh. 224. Uh-huh. 8009. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I will send that to him as soon as we finish this call. Cool. All right. Great. What other comments and questions do you have? Melinda, do we have access to the library room that we're going to be presenting in to kind of maybe try and run the PowerPoints one time in case we have to make any minor adjustments? That's a good question. I don't believe we will have access to that in advance. Um, I would run your PowerPoint in the room where you're practicing at the hotel. That way, if you do need to make any adjustments to it, you'll know you'll, you have made those ahead of time. One thing you all might consider is that day, make sure your PowerPoints are on a thumb drive because it's easiest if you can just hand that off to whomever has their computer hooked up to the, the um, projector. That also makes me think of another thought. Um, I'm going to assume that all of you have access to Google Docs because when we do our um, uh, the the biorefinery challenge, I will I have the uh, PowerPoint and other documents related to that in a Google Doc. And right when we get started, I will share it with all of you so that you'll have access. We don't share it to you in advance because we don't want you to do any advanced work on it. Uh, we want everybody to, to experience it at the same time. But that day, as we're getting started, I will share that with all of you. So please make sure that you have access to um, Google Docs. And if you, um, if you have a laptop and can bring it without difficulty, that's a good thing to do. Um, we, we don't want to require it. We know not everybody has one. But it would help if each of the groups we assemble has one or two laptops among them. Melinda, I don't mean to, uh, I guess, butt in again, um, but for the library, we do have some group study rooms that um, whoever is at NC State can probably um, reserve for students that where you can practice your presentation if people desire. Okay, so it would give you an additional practice space beyond the hotel. Wouldn't be the exact room we're going to be in, but it's an additional practice space at the library. Thanks, Caitlin. That's good information. If anybody wants to do that, you might reach out to Caitlin to ask how to go about doing that. Other questions, things we can help with related to the schedule, and then in a second we'll kind of open it up broader to any travel questions you may have at all. Okay, I'm not hearing any yet. Um, I'm going to make a note to myself that when I send out the recording, I'm also going to include bios. I'm also going to include the additional names from Shannon and from Caitlin. And I'm going to include the instruction to bring a laptop if you have it. Okay. All right, yeah. So we've talked through the schedule. As you think about your preparation to travel, we're all traveling Sunday um, to North Carolina. We're all traveling home uh, Wednesday. What questions do you have? Is there anything I can help make that um, feel, or make you feel more prepared for that? Are most of you traveling with your faculty mentor? Do you know? If you, if you aren't, let me know, I guess, is what I'm saying. Let it say, they say so right now, if you're not, so that we're aware. I'm not. Chelsea, I'm going on my own. Is that Josh that I just heard? Yep. 
Okay, so Josh and Chelsea are definitely traveling on their own. Do you guys both feel comfortable with that? I do. I don't have a problem with it. Cool. Okay, great. I'm on my own as well, and I'm okay with that. Okay, great. Thank <laughs> you. Well, yeah, Dr. Wu's not going, so I'll be by myself as well. Okay, Ryan, you're cool with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, good. All right. If anybody has an issue or something they're concerned about, please notify me and Shannon immediately. Um, we found out last time, kind of as the day was occurring, that we had some students who were traveling by themselves and were hadn't ever traveled before. So that would be so intimidating. And um, it created some confusion because we thought, everybody thought they were traveling with their faculty, um, including the students and the faculty. So it um, was it was very messed up. We've tried to fix that this time and make sure that didn't happen without a student's notice or, or awareness, um, but please let us know if there's something going on with your travel that concerns you. What other questions? So I've, I've opened it up to questions about the schedule, questions about your travel. What else can we tell you regarding your presentations, regarding um, what trainings we're doing, things like that? What can we share with you that would be helpful to, for you to know? Um, in terms of what to wear, is it similar to San Francisco? That's a good question. Um, it kind of depends on the day. So the first day and the last day. First day is travel day um, and arrive and have a networking just or just a reception among us. The last day is focus groups, optional tours, and travel. Those are pretty casual days. I mean, I wouldn't be in any – anytime you travel on behalf of an organization, I wouldn't choose to wear ripped clothing or anything like that. But – you're good in, you know, clean jeans and a polo or something like that. It's nobody's going to question um, what you're wearing if it's casual. The first day, Monday, uh, Monday the first day that we have meetings, um, it does not need to be business clothing. You can be in what I would call business casual. So um, khakis and a, and a polo, things like that would be totally appropriate. The day that you're doing your working group presentations, I would want to be in business clothing if I were you. You're going to be presenting in front of us and in front of industry and um, you want to present yourself as well as possible. So if, if my suggestion would be business clothing. You don't have to have a full-on suit, but look nice. Thanks. Does that help? Yeah. yeah perfect. So it's a little less dressy than when we were together in, in San Francisco overall, but except for that one day. What other questions do y'all have? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. You, in this document that Casey sent out, you can find your reading assignments, you can find um, information about the breakfast. It says that you should give your room number when you enter the breakfast area. Um, shares information about departure. Checkout is 11 a.m. Um, even if you're staying longer than that, please check out by that time period. Like what I mean is even if you're staying in the city longer than 11 a.m., you still need to check out from your hotel by 11. Um, Casey included a map and directions for those who are driving. And then the final page here does include reimbursement guidelines. Actually, final pages includes reimbursement guidelines. Okay. Um, as we look past this and look ahead to the rest of the month and what's due in the, in the coming month, I want to go through really quickly the calendar. Let me share. Oh, hang on. Let me share that calendar so that you can see that. Well, maybe. I don't know why I can't get it to do it. This is odd. Let me try something different. Hmm. 
it still just wants to share. Oh, here it is. I see it. Okay. It's just calling it something different. There we go. All right. So I want to share the calendar. Um, there is not going to be an after report for this webinar. It would be silly to have you do an after report when this is just information that you already have had in your inboxes and we're answering questions as needed. So where it says on April 12th after report is due, please disregard that. And I'm going to make that note in the email that I send out um, with the recording as well. Okay, then um, your outreach event reports are technically due April 12th. Many of you have been in communication with Shannon and Casey to let them know that you'll need an extension on that. And I know that what they've shared with you is as long as you have their approval for that and are aware that it may uh, delay your stipend that that's fine um, so if you hopefully everybody though in the next few weeks is closing out their outreach event and um, getting those reports in Casey is there anything you want to share about the reports you've been receiving and parts that are working out really well or parts that are missing anything you want to any advice you want to give there um, I don't think I have too much right now. We haven't received a ton of reports just yet, um, but I think as those start rolling in, that um, we can start providing some more feedback uh, regarding that. Awesome. Thanks, Casey. Um, by April 30th, we want to see your final working or your final report for your working group. So when you guys present uh, in North Carolina, the questions you get will also include suggestions sometimes. So someone might include a question and say, you know, why didn't you guys address this? Or um, what recommendations do you have for future groups? Um, or things like that. And so some of what you hear in the questioning, you may then want to go back and adjust your, your report based on the feedback you get. Um, and you're also gonna get some feedback from Corey, um, who works with our team and she is going to review each one of those reports and then send you some thoughts about how you might strengthen the written report. Um, especially if you want to publish it, if you're considering um, publishing that report or um, trying to get it into a journal of any kind. So you'll get several forms of feedback and we're hoping that you'll take that all into consideration and um, then finalize your working group report. Um, and then the last thing due this month, um, and I think the last thing due at all, oh well, okay, I'll come back to that. So the last thing due this month um, is that you need to have your final mentoring session with your faculty mentor and complete your IGP again. You can either use the form we've been using or you can send me an email um, with a Word document or a PDF, um, or you could attach a Word document or a PDF in Classroom. I'll take it however you, get, you send it. Um, this is your final time to send that in. So what we're looking for in this one is how have you done in terms of your goals? What have you done to accomplish those goals and how are you feeling ending this year um, in terms of your growth and moving forward? Um, please, uh, as we did with the last version or the last uh, iteration of this, please send it to your faculty mentor before you send it to me. We are not extending the deadline on this one. So we're not saying send it to them by the 30th and then send it to me a week later. So I'm asking you to take into consideration the time that you need to get it in front of your faculty mentor for their feedback and then turn it around to me by the 30th. Um, and I'll get feedback to you just like I always do on those. Um, so that's April 30th, as well as your working group final report. And then all that's really left is in May, you'll have um, spring conference report and receipts due. Um, and when we say report and receipts, we mean like your um, expense report and receipts. And then your post-program survey response um, due to Carrie. It'll be an online survey that you'll complete for her. So those are really the big items um, still hanging out there. I don't believe, yeah. Yeah, that was last year. So you don't have, beyond May, you have nothing else to do. Um, so really at this point, you're looking at finishing up outreach event reports, finish finalizing your working group report, finalizing your IGP, and then doing a post-program survey and your spring conference expense reports. Any questions about those items that are coming due? Um, I have a question about our, so we have a working group PowerPoint 
Mm -hmm. um, do we need to go ahead and send that like to the Google Classroom or email it to y'all or just like have it ready? Just have it ready on a thumb drive. Okay. That's great. That's fantastic. And you don't, we did not ask people to submit their PowerPoints with their working, with the reports um, last year. If you do submit that, that's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. But um, what we want to, to uh, kind of put in the annals of cable is the final report because we actually put that together and send that to USDA so that they have a full copy of all of the reports when they're done. <clears throat> Good question, Caitlin. Other questions? Y'all are quiet today. I'm going to assume and hope that that's because you're so well prepared and you're feeling um, really confident about the travel and the conference coming up in the presentations. Um, if anybody has questions that they didn't think to ask during this conversation or um, wanted to ask privately, shoot me a message. Um, that's totally fine. And um, as promised, as soon as I have the recording from Casey, I'll get it out to you guys with this series of information that I've been compiling uh, during this call. So I just want to thank you guys for taking time to join us today and um, making sure we're all prepared. And we'll see you on Sunday. We're excited to see you all. Melinda, I just wanted to ask whether the breakout rooms, the question to Casey, I guess, are the breakout rooms for any of the groups that would like to meet now, are they available? Webinar. Yes, I can make breakout rooms for anybody that wants to meet. GBI I did get your message, so I will set your group into one. But if anybody else wants to meet, just let me know. Good question, Jibia. And uh, and Casey, are do we do we have a time limit on that? Are we cut off at four or five or what is that situation? Um, no, I don't think that there's a time limit. You you're okay. free to stay in as long as you'd like. Okay. Thank you. All right, so if anybody plans to stay on and meet together as a team, start talking to Casey so he can help make that happen. I'm going to jump off, and uh, we'll just look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. Safe travels, everybody. Bye, Melinda. Bye. Thank you, guys. Are we getting together, Daniel and Chelsea and Haley? Yes, I uh, chatted with Casey about it. Okay, cool. Okay, everybody should start getting invites now.